First of all, I would like to thank you all for uh, staying here. Now I know who are really my friends. Uh, huh? Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, I would like very much, first of all, to thank you uh, all, and especially uh, Professor Boaz Ganor and Dr. Eitan Azani for inviting me. I'm going to speak in a short time, as I'm almost the, the last one, about... Uh, no, almost. I said almost. No, they should be happy. Okay. <laughs> I have a joke about it, but I'm not going to tell it to you now. Uh, the important thing that I would like to speak today is about how easy it is to become a player in the cyber world and why you don't need to be Israeli people, United States people, and other countries which are so sophisticated using their special uh, ecosystem uh, in order to be a player in this uh, field uh, called uh, cyber-terrorism. I also would like, uh, first of all, to thank you, uh, Sigalit, for your words. I really agree with you that we need to have much, much, much more women dealing with cyber, and I think that you are an excellent uh, example of doing it. When we speak about the Israeli ecosystem on cyber, we speak about five pillars, which are, first of all, the defense, as we are a part, all of us are going to a national service. Then we speak about the uh, industry, that we have a very, uh, and I'm not going to come to details, about the industry, we have a very sophisticated industry. Then we speak about one of the most important parts in our eco cyber ecosystem, which is education. And education takes one of the most important roles dealing with cyber. And Israel was, I think, the one of the first countries in the world to teach cyber more than 15 years ago in the Ben-Gurion University of the Negev teaching cyber as a master degree. We speak about uh, human capital, which we have very talented people, and we speak about national labs as well. So, uh, okay, it is a culture in Israel. When I speak about a culture, I mean that in order to become a real player, either as a cyber attacker or a cyber defender, you need to learn, or you need to be a real hacker that you should be well identified on time. And the question is, uh, what really happened in the world? Why did we suddenly start to find out that, there we are going, that we are having many other partners, unofficial partners, who are dealing with cyber? Let's call them terrorist organization. How did it come that suddenly Hezbollah, Hamas, and all the other groups became players. And I'm not going to speak about social engineering. Everybody spoke about it, so I'm not going to speak about it. Social engineering is taking a very important role. It is going to, be a, to take a much more important role in the coming or in the near future. How does it happen that exactly on uh, five, 5th of uh, May, I think, this year, the Israeli IDF spokesman said for the first time ever, uh, we identify uh, Hamas hackers in the Gaza Strip, and we decided to attack them kinetically. For the first time ever, almost ever, we came out, we Israel, came out with the message, not only that we identified hackers who were acting against us, but that we also found the place that we were staying, and they showed the picture of the building, and we also attacked this building, and it's not just a message. It means that they took a kind of a role, I, wouldn't, I, know, won't, I, I am not able to say whether it was important or not, but at least they tried to do many things during that time of this uh, activity. So I really ask myself always, how did it happen? How can it be? Why it became so easily to become a player? And really, first of all, we have to still think our most important allies called the United States of America, but not only the United States of America. Because many of the most sophisticated zero days attack and vulnerabilities were suddenly came out to the dark web. Also, they came out to a websites and unfortunately and unluckily, everybody is able now to come and purchase this kind of vulnerabilities and start using it. 
And suddenly we found the Shodan broker, and we found that uh, even Nonpetia was a part of these tools that were identified in the network. It means, and everybody spoke about the human leaking, the, 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 the part that uh, is not so strong, which is the human beings that suddenly came out and exposed these capabilities to criminals. And criminals do not even look at who is their customers unless one thing, they are looking whether you have credentials with them. So uh, my friend Abe Wagner, he, I believe, cannot buy any new tool in the darknet. But uh, a Hamas organization and some of his uh, leaders, which are well known, and did in the past all kind of activities together with the darknet, it can be AK-47 and other examples that I'm not going to give now, when they're coming to Mr. Vasily in the darknet and they're asking him, we would like to see, because now they give you also a demo, what is the new vulnerabilities that you have today for iOS 13, and it was one month ago, he can tell them, no problem, just show me your credentials. They show him their credentials and immediately they can buy this solution. So unfortunately, for a big amount or a small amount of money, you're able to become a partner. But you know, the most, one of the most important problem dealing with cyber is the attribution problem. Meaning nobody is usually coming and say, hey, I'm the one who attacked Israel or the United States or anybody else. But today, while you are coming to the darknet, they tell you, listen, you don't have to do it yourself. We are giving you something new. We have a new marketing capabilities, a tech as a service. So you don't have to buy any more the capability. You're able to get it from us and we will do it for you. So not only that nobody else will be able to identify that you took a part, but they will not be able to come and see who we are. Unfortunately, during the last, I think, three, four years, some companies, or not too many, were able to get, and I believe that we will hear it from uh, Cobweb in the, future, in, the, in the near future, were able to get into the deep web and the darknet in order to identify who is playing and who is selling and who is doing all these kind of things. The second thing that happened was that this organization, the terrorist organizations, were able to get all, a big support from Iran. When I'm speaking about Iran in cyber, I take them very seriously. They are good. They were even, according to some sources, were able to take Stuxnet, turn it into Shamun, and attack Aramco in Saudi Arabia at about, I think it was 2013. Which means these guys know how to work. These guys know how to identify the targets. And they know how to deal with these tools at the right way. And when Iran is behind you, and we had some attacks, not one or two, some of them were published in Israel, like Volatile Cedar. You can read the Checkpoint report about it. You find out that you are dealing with a real enemy who is very professional, who knows how to work, and unluckily support terrorism activities. Hezbollah, for sure, but also, I believe, Hamas and others. This became a very big change. Not anymore that only the big comp uh, continents and smart countries were able to deal with cyber attacks, but also other non-state organizations. Other things that happened, I believe that all of us heard about a company that considered to be in Israel called NSO. I think one of the best companies in the world to deal with cyber attacks. It was published not a long time uh, ago, that one of their employer was accused, and now I think he's in prison or something, that he tried to sell one of the Trojan horses that they are doing. It means that dealing with Trojan horses, also from the companies who are doing it, is a big issue. And if you are in WikiLeaks, 
you can read that it happened also to some other companies in another way. Hacking team was hacked, and some other companies were hacked. Everything is published. It means that so many tools are now in the market and much easier to get them, much easier to deal with them. I have many other examples, but I'm not sure that this is the most important thing to discuss with because I would like to speak a little bit about the existing time and the future. And I would like, first of all, to mention something that we are going to face very quickly. As a matter of fact, politically, we are already in this part of our life. It calls the supply chain. And supply chain became a big issue in political issue. The trade war between the United States and China and using or not using Chinese Huawei, 5G is a part of this issue. 5G is going to happen. It's going to be. Unfortunately, I don't know of any American company doing it. I don't know of any Israeli company doing it. I know about Ericsson. I know about Nokia. I know about Huawei. And by the way, Huawei also gave a message, I think, to Nokia when they took them to court and say, listen, they didn't say it. There's an example. We are going to sue you for $1 billion because most of the patents, patents that you are using are ours. Wow, what's going to be in 5G? And 5G is going to take a very important role in our life. And by the way, the Chinese are already talking about 6G, which is, be, which is going to be much more quickly. And 5G means a new threat to all of us. A new thread called using billions of IoT devices. Internet of things, internet of everything. And if you want to make it a little bit bigger, speak about IIoT, the industrial IoT that we are facing. And when we are dealing with beautiful words like safe city, smart cities, uh, medical devices, uh, e-health, a uh, hospitality, and all these beautiful words, we are speaking about 5G. And 5G, maybe you didn't hear it, but it was published, that even at least one or two vulnerabilities were already found. And 5G is going to change our world because if we spoke about, till now, about connection to Wi-Fi, which goes to 10, 20 meters, now no more Wi-Fi. Everything is IP driven. Not only that it is IP driven, it is based on our cellular network. So imagine yourself, somebody would like to, thanks God, it's not me, somebody who has a, a, an insulin pump or other example that I can give you, he doesn't have to be near to us, connected to the internet. He can be somewhere in Yemen maybe, if somebody will give him the tools and all this information. So 5G is going to change our world dramatically, and 5G has its threats, of course, also the opportunities. When I speak about opportunities, I speak about 450 companies only in Israel dealing with cyber, no one yet in 5G security. And it means that the, our enemies are looking at new ideas, at new ways, how to get and change our life. One of the biggest changes that happened was the combination or the link between IT and OT. In the past, we, some people still think that they are fully secured because they are dealing with a separate network, which is a nice story. I came to some companies to, to see what's going on there, and they said, oh, we are separating network. And I said, what about the cloud? They say, cloud? We're not connected to the cloud, and we found that they have more than five connected clouds already. And speaking about the cloud, is it secured? What kind of security? So new directions, new initiative will come in order to attack the cloud, in order to attack the 5G, and uh, all the other things. Uh, just to finalize, because usually Eitan will see, show me the two minutes that I have about a new threat. Drones. Especially in our region, we start to hear, not only in our region, every day, 
There is a drone which is bonging, b bombing, trying to do this, trying and see, see that. If you have, if you want to laugh but don't laugh too high, uh, there is a YouTube uh, movie about uh, uh, a drone which is coming with a gun and take your money. I don't know whether you saw it, but it is amazing. And it's not uh, a fiction, it's not a science fiction anymore. It can happen. So uh, we have two problems with the drones. One, and we saw it already in Black Hat, we found out the drones can become a payload in order to deal with new Trojan horses to attack you. You buy a DJI drone from China, everything is coming from China. And this is what I just spoke about, the supply chain. And you uh, are going to FedEx, you get a box, you know, usually FedEx and uh, Amazon is going to deliver all the things by them. But instead of having a pizza, you'll put there some machine that will start to attack you. Of course, there are other ideas as well, but also how do you deal with and how do you defend yourself from all kind of drones trying to attack you. I believe that the, uh, the, the way that is well known today is dealing with jammers, of course, but uh, it is not such a successful technology. I believe that also cyber is going to be one of them. There are so many startups now in Israel dealing with cyber. I hope that some of them are going to use also new technology in order to uh, find out of how we uh, can do. Something else that happened, and I know only one Israeli company dealing with it, is attack through the hardware. Sepio just came out with uh, some uh, publicity that they checked even some Microsoft mouse that you can buy for five, six dollars, and they found out that already on the system, supply chain, uh, something is in there. But why do we go to Microsoft? You can go to iPhone. It is still, I think, assembled in China. And if it is assembled in China, you don't know how many ports are open in order to update about your activity, even today. You own it, your GPS start to work, your cameras start to operate, and all the other things. And we are now going to 5G. Much more capacity, much more uh, features, so many other things that we cannot even think today what is going to happen. Are we, got, by the way, uh, the uh, general uh, Stuart spoke about some uh, horrible scenarios. We are living in a beautiful uh, time. Unluckily, Vincent has to go back on the plane that uh, you never know what the infotainment system is uh, being used for something else, but I wish you luck. <laughs> so, uh, so the, what I would like very much just to summarize is that new trends of threats are coming to our life every day. L I look at them also as big opportunities like out IoT and IIoT. New um, threats are coming through the cloud and therefore there are so many companies are dealing today with securing the clouds and split the information about nine, ten clouds and bring them back together, especially the media companies are now looking at this, especially the today, uh, uh, yesterday I think uh, Apple just announced that they are coming also with new kind of streaming. And what about the new hospitals that we are going to stay there and nothing is secured? And as a matter of fact, speaking about 5G, there are not yet any regulations about it. You know why? Because almost nobody is using it today. But I do believe that 5G is going to be also one of the best ways that will change our life in cybersecurity. I'm not going to speak now about AI and AR and VR that 5G is going to change them. I would just like to mention that when we are speaking about AI, 
Usually we hear today about new companies, some of them Israeli, some of them others, that are dealing with automatic AI uh, identification of vulnerabilities. But now take it to the other hand. Take it to the attackers. They can use the same tools. They can use other tools in order to find out, okay, where is the vulnerabilities? Who is going to be stronger? The one who will have much more computing capabilities all over. And that's why, by the way, in Israel, the government of the state of Israel, headed by Prime Minister Netanyahu, I identified this issue, and we are going to be, luckily, one of the most sophisticated or advanced countries in dealing with two issues, quantum computing and AI. Because it is a, these, these two are big threats, but big opportunities. So just to uh, finalize, remember that we are coming to new technology. It is changing <coughs> dramatically quickly, but at the same time, we find out that terrorist organizations are trying to look for using this kind of technology, but at the same time, we have to remember that cyber is not just a regular, a, a regular threat anymore, but it is also a threat that should be attacked, especially on wartime or crisis time, kinetically. Thank you very much.